Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. When you're a really healthy individual and you're committed to having ingredients in your life that uh, are anchored in goodness and decency, it can be so difficult for you to come to terms with the opposite in narcissistic people in your life. I mean, when you look at the, the way that narcissists treat people, you think, well, why do you have to do this? Let's remember that as part of narcissism, these individuals can be highly uh, overbearing and they can show low regard for who they, who you are. They can be critical and judgmental. They won't let you finish a sentence. Uh, they can be conniving and phony and they can be stubbornly opinionated and they can just be so difficult and you, you're over there thinking, but it doesn't need to be this way. Can't they see the error of their ways and can't they make some, uh, some movement forward? But one of the things that we have to come to terms with is there are some narcissists who are so deeply committed, and I use that word deliberately, committed to their own pattern of living that they're beyond redemption. And there's one particular sign that you can watch for that says they are all the way in to the point where they're probably never going to come back out. And that one sign is their sense of contempt toward you. Now, this is research-based. John Gottman is the one that got it started as he was looking at marriages and why they come apart. But then people have added to what he's decided or he's uh, concluded. And we can see that when narcissists will latch on to an attitude of contempt and they keep going back to that over and over then that's a really strong sign that says this person's not going to change. And like I say, they're beyond redemption. Now, when we talk about contempt, we're talking about a, a feeling that says that individual in front of me is so inferior. That person is so inadequate that I have deemed them to be pretty much worthless. That's the way a contemptuous person thinks. These individuals show a very strong disregard for another person's core dignity as if that individual is of no account to them whatsoever. And it leads to other uh, parallel uh, characteristics like strong disdain and condescension. And ultimately, it can even lead uh, that individual into a place of hate. Now, to give you an idea of how contempt can be displayed from that narcissist toward you. There are multiple attitudes that they'll convey. And I'm sure that if you're listening to me today, you can just nod your head and say, oh yeah, I've been on the receiving end of this. For example, the, the contemptuous person in their mind thinks, why would I bother trying to understand you? I mean, this is you we're talking about. I don't need to know you. And that's that low empathy that they have. Or they may think to themselves, well, I deserve favors that you don't because, well, you're just, you, you're not deserving like I am. And they have this real strong controlling and entitled attitude towards so much. Uh, in addition, they, they can even excuse their own anger by saying, well, if I rage or if I am out of bounds, according to you, with my anger, you set the whole thing up. And so in their contempt, rather than uh, than saying, you know, I need to take a look at my responsibilities and our disagreements, they even come and say, well, if I have problems, you caused it. You're the, uh, the reason that I can struggle. And then, of course, in their contempt toward you, they're thinking, I don't want to spend uh, personal time with you. I certainly don't want to share personal issues with you. I can't be vulnerable, and I'm not going to start with you. And this is them hiding behind their false self. And basically, they'll just declare, well, you're a low life, and <laughs> I just don't need to have any kind of investment in who you are. That's what we're talking about when we say that a person has committed themselves. They are, they're all in with their attitude of contempt. Now, healthy individuals 
uh, especially in moments of uh, disagreement, certainly when, uh, when you have the good times, healthy individuals will think to themselves, well, I have enough respect for any individual's core decency that I'd like to remain civil in the way that I engage with other individuals. And if that means that we disagree, I'd still like to maintain that sense of respect and civility. And the narcissist is over there thinking, I don't do that. <laughs> they don't make any apology for it. And that's what I mean when I say they're so locked into it. In this moment, them to you, I don't have any regard for you. You are a failure. And you know why you're a failure? Because you have not propped up my ego. Now, they may not put it quite in those words, but that's how they operate. And that's the contempt. And like I say, when, when, they've, when you notice over and over that they're in that place, uh, this is a very difficult situation at all for any kind of change or adjustment to happen. Now, how does a person get to the point in their life to where this contemptuous attitude becomes front and center? And it's important for you to realize, because they want to make it all about you, but it's not. It's important for you to realize their attitude of contempt is baked into their personality from years gone by. Uh, it's part of their own personal emotional landscape. They've been on the receiving end of contemptuous messages. I can promise you 100%. I know you're not supposed to say 100%. Okay, 99.999%. They have been on the receiving end of contempt themselves. And rather than coming to terms with it, they've turned around and they, they hold themselves in contempt, but they, they turned around and say, well, you're the problem. And they go outward and they can't go inward and, uh, and explore what that's all about. These individuals have a deep history of feeling not enough. They were uh, told that in so many terms. There's a grading system that they have, uh, have been exposed to. And they think, well, the only way you're going to be a somebody is to make the grade. And if you hit the markers, you're okay. And if you don't, you're not. And so that's how they think. Uh, these individuals have a deep history of not feeling understood, which is why they don't want to be vulnerable. It's like, I don't want to put my thoughts and feelings out there because you're just going to step all over it. And so they carry that pain on the inside of themselves. They actually have an attitude of paranoia that's baked into their personalities. Rather than thinking, hey, you and I, we can get along uh, pretty well, even in the midst of our differences. But instead of thinking that way, it's like, you're out to get me, aren't you? And if I say or do anything wrong, you're going to come down on me. And they have that paranoid feeling. And so they take the preemptive strike on you. They have no ability or willingness to forgive or to accept ugly truth as it is. Uh, because in their world, uh, the message is, if you do something wrong, there's, there's a price to pay and you're going to pay. And so they think that way toward you. These are individuals who are in a strong compensation mode. And it's like, I have to exact vengeance upon other individuals because my life has not gone exactly the way that I want. And so they become highly demanding and their attitude is, the world owes me beginning with you. That's how they think. So when narcissists go into this hard, contemptuous mindset and it shows up in all these ways and they have all this unfinished business, uh, on the inside, another question would be uh, to ask, what do they hope to accomplish by holding on to this contempt? I mean, you, they can't possibly be happy, uh, but in the narcissist's mind, they, they've got several things they're hoping to accomplish. Number one, uh, they want you to fear them. If they can put some sort of uh, trembling on the inside, somehow they think that that makes them feel good. Uh, a second thing is they want to be in the seat of power. Uh, they are afraid of being powerless, and so uh, they go all in and saying, no, I must be the dominant one here. Or a third thing they're hoping to accomplish is they wish to prove how significant they are. I need people to know that I'm, I'm important, I'm necessary. And so somehow contempt conveys that. Or a fourth thing is uh, actually their contempt is, uh, is their way of trying to disguise their own uh, hidden feelings of ineptitude. It's like, I don't know what to do with conflict. And so I'll just come on in a real strong kind of way. And that, me that means I don't have to deal with all the complexities that life can bring. And then a fifth thing they're hoping to accomplish is they want to keep that upper hand kind of in the same way as a pre-adolescent kid does. You know, my, my grade is better than you. Or I hit a home run and you didn't, you know, things like that. And so there, there's all of this compensation that they have on the inside but it's being played out as if the problem is you. 
So knowing that some individuals are so deeply entrenched in their contempt that they're just basically beyond redemption, I think it's going to be important for you to ask, how am I going to respond so that I don't get pulled under by their harshness toward me? And first and foremost, and this is an ongoing theme that I have with you, and that is you want to be a, a big picture thinker. R remind yourself in those episodes when they display their contempt, there is so much behind the scenes that they're not coming to terms with. And I'm hoping you can see that there's much there that doesn't really belong to you. And then in addition, as you uh, try to figure out how to respond well to them, <laughs> drop the uh, the effort to try to get them to have insight. I mean, for example, if you if you were to say, well, you're trying to blame me for some of the chaos that's on the inside of you, which would probably be accurate, uh, they're not going to see that. And so um, stay away from that. Not that you're wrong, but that these are individuals who don't want your input. Uh, in addition, I would strongly encourage that you uh, choose not to exchange anger for anger or insult for insult or arguing for arguing. If they're going to be what they are in their contemptuous mindset, that's where they are. It's like, I don't, I don't want you to set my pace. I can't afford that. Look <laughs> where I don't want to get out of the ditch where you are. Uh, instead, you want to have what I call delicate detachment. You kind of pull away emotionally and then you practice boundaries. Uh, you define who you're going to be and you establish consequences. You follow through on your own initiatives. And when they say, well, that's stupid and I hold you in contempt, then my response is, yes, I see that. I, I realize that's what you're doing. And then you continue to do what you need to do anyway. Narcissists can be living proof that uh, some people are so damaged that they are indeed beyond redemption. They're not going to be repaired. Uh, they can't grow because instead of growing, they displace and they project. Uh, they displace their problems onto you and they see in you the problems they can't come to terms with in themselves. And I'm hoping that your response in mind can be simply this. And that is, I refuse to be a receptacle for your internal chaos. Now, I hope videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. And, and I, I know that so many of you are struggling with this. And I, I, uh, the reason I keep putting these videos out is so that you can have uh, a sense of realization that you're not necessarily the problem. You have growth to do, but you can get there. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to keep more coming in your direction. In addition, I know that there are times when you uh, could use some help with sifting this out. You know, I've been sponsored for years by the people at betterhelp.com. I've received so many positive comments from individuals who have said, I found a great therapist and it's been so helpful. And I hope that you could be one of those perhaps that could say that. We have a link below to the people at betterhelp.com. Licensed professional therapist. It's affordable and it's accessible. You don't have to wait four weeks to get in. And so if that's a need that you would have, go through the link that we have, get a 10% discount on the first month uh, and, uh, and get the help that you would deserve. Likewise, I also have courses uh, that I've put a lot of work into and you may want to go in that route. Uh, each course ha has at least 25 videos uh, and then uh, each video has written documentation with, uh, with uh, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about how to have healthy connections. So, uh, this is me setting boundaries with the narcissist in your life, free to be, uh, breaking free from the controllers that are there. We also have my webinars that have been presented in a very different format, and that, that's all on the website. And then in addition to that, we have uh, access to my podcast, uh, many, many articles, when I say many, like a whole lot. And then in addition, we have my books and other resources. Narcissists, they're, they're imprisoned by their own contemptuous nature, but they try to push it onto you. Let's recognize that's where they are, but you don't have to be inside that prison with them. I hope that you can break free and move in your own healthy direction. And in doing so, it, it represents your commitment to decency and steadiness. And I hope that ultimately it takes you to your place of internal peace.